Howdy folks. You know, back in 2020, when we realized that we were not going to have a typical Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua season, we started recording little snippets of performances of music, interviews, storytelling, uh, going back into the archives and digging out some video of uh, performances from years gone by. We put them all together in what we called Tiny Tent Shows. We did over 40 Tiny Tent Shows. And what you're about to see now is a rebroadcast, an encore airing, if you will, of a previously recorded Tiny Tent Show. Thank you so much for supporting us, and we look forward to seeing you back beneath the canvas. Howdy folks and welcome to Tiny Tent Show, episode number 30, featuring Tom Drawn and Associates performing True Grass, which is Tom's touring theatrical presentation of the history of bluegrass music. Appearing with Tom tonight will be Bruce Qualey on bass and Jed Malishki on banjo. They will also be accompanied by resident hotshots Molly Otis and Randy Sabine. We are deeply grateful to you for taking the time to sit with us and watch this performance. We're also grateful to our supporters and our sponsors. We can only offer Tiny Tent Show because of them. We hope that you'll consider joining them if, if that's possible for you and making a contribution right now. All of your Tiny Tent Show donations go to support not only the musicians and performers that you see on the screen, but the folks behind the scenes who do all the hard work of, of pulling this material together and presenting it in the format that you're observing right now. Please note that there is a virtual tip jar available for this performance. And to help spread the word about Tiny Tent Show, please like and share this video on your social media platforms. At intermission, I'm gonna dial Tom up and we will talk about the genesis of this show that you're about to see. But for now, let's settle in for the first part of this history lesson with Springs. Strings. Springs, if only. Wait till Tom and I talk about the weather during our interview and you'll see that I that was a Freudian uh, seasonal slip right there. This is a history lesson with strings, ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Tom Drawn. Please welcome the show True Grass. <laughs> She's no angel, no angel, her wings are not real. She'll ruin your life if your heart she can steal. She'll tell you tales to bring tears to your eyes. But don't you believe them for their own advice. a king on his throne you'd better not trust her it's wrong if you do she's broken many hearts and she'll break yours in two she's no angel no angel her wings are not real she'll ruin your life if your heart she can steal she'll tell you tales to bring tears to your eyes but don't Your heart she can't steal She'll tell you tales 
Girls who bring tears to your eyes But don't you believe them for their own lies Now don't you believe them for their own lies Way down in Columbus, Georgia That's where I don't want to be Way, way down in Columbus Stockade Take me back to Tennessee Well, you can take me back to old Kentucky Any place that you decide and Just turn me loose from this old stockade I tell you, buddy, I don't mind The other night as I lay sleeping I dreamt I held you in my arms was mistaken these prison walls were all around well you can take me back to old kentucky any place that you decide you just turn me loose from this old stockade i tell you buddy i don't mind two years ago it seemed a long time when i was free and on my own but here i am Behind that stockade I wish to God they'd take me home Well, you can take me back to old Kentucky Any place that you decide and Just turn me loose from this old stockade I tell you, buddy, I don't mind Let's hear that banjo, Jack. Georgia, that's where I don't want to be. Way, way, way down in Columbus Stockade. Take me back to Tennessee. Well, you can take me back to old Kentucky. Any place that you decide. You just turn me loose from this old stockade. I tell you, buddy, I don't mind. I tell you, buddy. Well, hello and welcome to the Tiny Tent Show. Thank you so much for tuning in here. I'm Tom Drawn. And I'm Jed Malishki. I'm Bruce Qualley. And, and we're, we're the, the True Grass Trio. And it surely is a pleasure to be here playing for you right now. Oh, yeah. Now. I've been looking forward to this to a long time, Tom. Absolutely. We're going to have a lot of fun today. And I hear we're going to yeah, have some are. special guests. Is that right? We are. And we're even going to have a bass solo. <laughs> so, uh, right now, what those songs... Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you can uh, leave for intermission when that comes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, no, I, we, uh, we just have a great time playing together. It's great to be here playing for you. And uh, those were a couple of songs, really old one, Columbus Stockade Blues from the uh, later 1800s. Kitty Wells' song, She Is No Angel, probably from the 1950s, I think. Hey, hey Jed? And uh, now we're going to do one for you that uh, I actually wrote. It's called Want to Go Back to That Time. That's the chorus, and you're welcome to sing along out there in, in uh, live stream land. You actually wrote this. I did. It's about... Uh, All right, thanks for the warning. About having a great time playing with my college band. And it goes like this. One. <laughs> Living for the minute every day No worries and no debts, no bills to pay We laughed and played music with our friends And we never thought those days would ever end Now I want to go back to that time When my old friends were all in their I want to go back to that time. Now 
my daddy, he had dark hair yesterday. But now his face is wrinkled and he's gray. He sits there in his chair right by the door. But he doesn't get outside much anymore. Now he wants to go back to that time when his old friends were all in their prime. But the years like the autumn leaves keep flowing down the line. And I want to go back to that time. Let's hear the banjo. Sing a song of hope for every day. A song to chase unhappiness away. A message of goodwill we'll try to send. Let's live in harmony until the end. When we'll want to go back to that time. When our old friends were all in. Can I do one of my songs now? You did one of yours? I Can I do one of mine? I think you should, yeah. I got a song I wrote here about a little area. Well, not a song. Songs have words. Tunes are just... Ba this is a banjo tune. And this is about a little area where we live. We're all from northwest Wisconsin here, not too far from the big top. Uh, Bruce here from Cable, Wisconsin. Cable's own Bruce Qualley. Tom Drawn from Ashland. I'm from Spooner. And kind of in the center of that area is a little town called Solon Springs. And there's a magical little area right by Solon Springs, and that's actually the springs by Solon Springs, because the springs by Solon Springs form the headwaters of two different rivers that flow in opposite directions. Headwaters out of the same body of water, how can this be? I don't know, but one is the Brule River. It flows north into Lake Superior. One is the St. Croix River. It flows south to the Mississippi, and this was an ancient canoe route. Oh, back when the Voyageurs used it back before that, the missionaries back before that, the Native Americans for thousands of years canoed this stretch, and there was a little portage there by Solon Springs to connect the two rivers, the Brule River and the St. Croix, and all you had to do was make that little short portage, and you could go from Lake Superior all the way down to the Mississippi River and on to New Orleans if you wanted to. Well, anyways, that little portage was called the St. Croix Passage.
think I would leave you crying when there's room on my horse for two. Climb up, Bear Jack, and stop your crying. We'll mend up your horse with glue. When we grow up, we'll both be soldiers, and our horses will not be toys. And maybe you will remember when we were two little boys. of the blue galloped away to where Jolie and he heard his brother say did you think I would leave you dying when there's room on my horse or two climb up here Joe and soon be flying back to the boys in the blue See Jack them all a tremble. Well, it may be the flash and the noise. Well, it may be because I remember when we were two little boys. Jed Malishki on the five string you, banjo. Two little boys. Yeah. Now we're going to feature our uh, political consultant for the group, Bruce Qualley who also happens to be a, a phenomenal bass player. Glad to have him here. Table's on! Well, this, th since this is a political season, we have to do one political song. No, you're not going to do yes, a political I song, am. are you? Yes, I am, I am. But... You're going to get away with this, huh? This, this, uh, are we don't we want, let him do this? We don't want to debate about it. This, oh, 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 oh. No, sorry. This, uh, <laughs> this dates back to 1948, and there was a mayoral election in Boston. The progressive candidate um, didn't have any money but he did know some folk singers. And they didn't have any money either, right? That's right. That's true. Mm -hmm. But they knew how to write songs, and so they wrote some songs about topical issues in the campaign. And they hired a flatbed truck and put some speakers on it and went around town and played these songs. Well, one of the major issues of the day was the transit authority, and it was not very popular. They raised rates, and the... So rate structure was kind of complicated. Some of the stops you had to you paid to get on, but then later on you had to pay to get off again, and it was it was a mess. And so, this became a, a major campaign issue. The candidate did not win the election, but it, he ended up with kind of a cool song. And ten years later, the Kingston Trio picked it up, and they had a massive hit with this uh, called the MTA. Well, let me tell you a story about a man named Charlie on that tragic and fateful day. He put ten cents in his pocket, kissed his wife and family, went to ride on the MTA. But did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate is still unlearned. He may ride forever neath the streets of Boston. He's the man who never returned. Charlie handed in his dime at the Kendall Square station and he changed for Jamaica Plain. When he got there, the conductor told him one more nickel. Charlie couldn't get off of that train. But did he ever return? No, he never returned. And 
and his fate is still unlearned. He may ride forever neath the streets of Boston. He's the man who never returned. Now all night long, Charlie rides through the station crying, what will become of me? How can I afford to see my sister in Chelsea or my cousin in Roxbury? But did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate is still unlearned. He may ride forever neath the streets of Boston. He's the man who never returned. Pick it, somebody. Square station every day at a quarter past two. And through the open window, she hands Charlie a sandwich as the train comes a rumbling through. But did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate is still unknown. He may ride forever neath the streets of Boston. He's the man who never returned. Citizens of Boston, don't you think it is a scandal how the people have to pay and pay? Fight the fair increase, vote for George O'Brien, help get Charlie off the MTA. But did he ever return? No, he never returned, and his fate is still unlearned. He may ride forever neath the streets of Boston, he's the man who never returned. He's the man who never returned. He's the man who never returned. All right, thank you, Mr. Bruce Qualley. And You're welcome. Let's bring up Mr. Tom Drone here to do a another tune that I guess uh, you wrote again. I did think it up. Yes. And this is a true story. I, I even wrote it down. It is a true story. On Halloween night, 2011, somebody broke into the county courthouse and stole the judge's robe. No. I bet that was a frightening thing. <laughs> so this song is called Order in the Court. Well, a burglar stole the judge's robe and he ran off in the night. It was Halloween and in that thing he must have been a fright. When the judge arrived at court next day and found that it was gone, he didn't know what else to do. So he sang this song, give me order, order in the court, order a new robe for me. Watchman then to oversee the place and it got awful lonesome in that big old empty space one night he dozed off in a chair slept till who knows when and when he woke to make his rounds the robe was gone again give me order order in the court order a new robe for me Oh! 
What's underneath you'll never want to see. Well, thank you so much. It's really great to be here playing for you with the True Grass Trio. We're going to do one more song, take a little break. And, uh, and have some special guests up Absolutely. There, yeah. We will have All some right. special guests coming up later. Uh, this last song we're doing in this set um, was done by the New Grass Revival. It was one of my favorite bluegrass bands from the 1970s and 80s. And uh, their guitar player from the 80s, Pat Flynn, wrote this song. And it's called, I'm Looking Past You. <laughs> Looking past you Looking past you With my eyes open wide I'm walking with pride I've got a free man locked up inside to swallow and you might be a tough act to follow but what else is new We'll be back soon with some special guests. Thanks for tuning in to the Tiny Tent Show. Well, Tom Drawn, it's good to see you. Um, I like that you've got a, a fire going just be behind you. I don't know what the weather will be like when folks are watching this, but, and actually, I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but where I am, we had seven inches of snow yesterday or the day before yesterday. And Whoa. Yeah, and then yesterday it kind of half melted, and then this morning we had a big pile of sleet followed by a thunderstorm with lightning and rain, and then we went back to sleet, and now it's just cold, rainy, and windy. So I too have a fire going in the house, but yours looks very cozy there. Well, thank you. Yes, it is cold, rainy, and uh, not too windy up here, but definitely cold and rainy. And uh, we got a couple of inches of snow yesterday, but uh, very much melted off by now. But there's, we're supposed to get more tonight, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we caught a pretty good wallop of it. I think we were right in the belt. But that's good because you like to have a lot to complain about. Yeah, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, here where we live, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. 
Pretty much, yeah. That's all you got to do. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Truegrass and how you came to put it together and, and the genesis of what we're watching tonight. Okay, well, thanks. You know, um, I've actually been playing bluegrass music since I was in high school, and that was longer ago than I cared to mention. But, uh, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time now. And then, you know, I've been in some of the shows up at Chautauqua. I've been a cast member in uh, various different shows. And Stephen Matier put together one uh, connecting the roots of um, bluegrass and old time music back to the old country, back to Ireland and, uh, and places. So it was called Belfast to Bluegrass. And I was part of the cast of that show. And um, the banjo player in my band, Jed Malishki, was in two different iterations of that show. Harrison Olk uh, was in a, another one. But uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, after we finished that show, I thought, wow, this was really cool. You know, maybe a sequel is in order. And um, I love the history of songs. I always have. Um, I love uh, the older, the better. A 500 year old song is just one of the coolest things I can think of. And uh, I like to know where things came from. And so, um, I, you know, thought, well, you know, we covered a lot of ground in that show, but there's plenty more material that could be done. And uh, so uh, there actually used to be a program on XM radio called Truegrass, and that show doesn't happen anymore. But I stole the name and I thought, well, okay, that's a really cool name. And um, so my idea was to have um, a five piece bluegrass band that could actually do a touring stage show with slides behind just like you know those shows up at Chautauqua and uh, so I just started just trying to put something together it's gone the band has gone through oh well just like bands do people come and people go so uh, we're more or less a trio functional trio right now uh, that can get together at pretty much any time and then depending on availability We've got a real short list of other players. So Molly O oh, on mandolin and uh, you know Randy Sabine on fiddle. I can't much get much better than that. So it's a great fun group to play with and that's where it came from. That's wonderful. It, at one point you compared bluegrass to a game of telephone uh, or maybe you were just talking about old music in general but folk music, music that is passed on through generations uh, much like the game of telephone, it changes over time. Maybe speak to that a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, uh, well, we talk about the oral tradition. So when people just learn something just by ear from a relative or even from a record or something like that, um, that's oral tradition. And a long time ago, you know, people say in the 1700s, they might, if they were really lucky, they might have had a fiddle. Um, but, you know, most people were at least able to sing for their own entertainment and uh, they would teach songs that had been in their family for many, many years. Uh, they would teach these songs to their nieces or their kids or their grandkids. And, um, you know, I know a, a friend from down in Asheville, North Carolina. Her name is Sheila K. Adams, and she is uh, a ballad singer who actually learned ballads from her granny Dell on the front porch of a log cabin in Madison County. And that's just always the way it was. But people forget words and then make up new words and they can't remember exactly how the tune went. So they sort of make up a new one and you get lots of different variations. So uh, with a song that's uh, hundreds of years old, you can find lots of, you know, a hundred variations on it. So uh, that's part of the fascination of studying these songs for me. I think it's interesting, even um, I've recorded some music uh, over time, and recently I listened to a couple of tracks of songs that we still perform today, but we recorded them about 15 years ago. And I was amazed at how those songs have evolved. And they're my own yeah. songs. I had no reason to change them. They just evolved through live performance, different bridge, different rhythm. Here and there, a lyric has been changed and you don't even recognize it happening. So it happens even with our own work. And I wonder too, if you could just speak as a musician in the moment, it has to be wonderful too, to play one of those old songs and know that 
you too are, you're putting a little bit of a twist on it. You're put, the, the trajectory of that song is being changed by you and someone else will pick it up in generations to come. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting idea also because uh, I know when I play something, um, especially with fiddle tunes, uh, I probably never play them exactly the same way twice. You know, they're always kind of the same tune, but there's a little something here and there that is different in the way I use the bow or something. And uh, so that happens quite a bit. And uh, yeah, like you said, as we think up things and then 20 years go by and we play them and we are actually doing something different with them than we did when we started. And uh, yeah, that's part of the process as well, the folk process. And uh, it makes me think of, okay, so there's some uh, you know amazing uh, classical musicians um, who have crossed over into the folk music world, like Yo-Yo Ma and uh, Joshua Bell, and people like that. Um, but they come from a tradition where things are very strict and learned by rote, and they're always played exactly the same way. And uh, they never deviate from that. Uh, they may deviate a little bit in expression, like how loud they are somewhere or how slow they do something, but otherwise the notes are always exactly the same. But, you know, when you get into the folk music world and so things are so much looser, you know, people just don't do things the same way every time. And that's part of the fun of it. The last question I'd ask you is, you're speaking to a long and storied tradition. I mean, you're talking about songs, as you've said, that are centuries old. Yeah. How on earth do you make your selection for the songs that you include? Because of course you're excluding hundreds and if not thousands of songs. Well, that's another really good question. Thanks, Michael. Um, okay, so the true grass idea was, you know, bluegrass is actually a uniquely American form of music. And uh, a lot of it is sort of banjo based and the banjo is considered to be a uniquely American instrument as well. Although its roots go back to Africa and uh, countries like Gambia and Gabon. And uh, there are other instruments that, um, you know, people that were hauled over here in slave ships, you know, remembered instruments they had had back there and they basically made similar ones, they evolved into the banjo in this country and banjos became really very popular in about the 1840s. And then, um, you know, you fast forward a little bit to after the Civil War and people uh, down in the rural South that had been real poor farmers uh, started working in factories and working in mines. And this enabled them to have some expendable income and then there were mail order catalog houses that like Sears and Montgomery Ward and lots of others that would sell musical instruments. So you could buy a Stradivari model violin or you could buy a banjo or a mandolin or a guitar. And people for their own entertainment started buying these and uh, playing in little family bands and maybe even playing for dances and things. So. The Piedmont area of uh, rural North Carolina was really a kind of a hotbed of music. And these influences of uh, ancient you know, songs that had been in families uh, from the settlers, European settlers who came there, started mixing in with uh, African-American influences on, on uh, the music from playing for dances and, and things like that. And uh, so then you, know, you get into the maybe 1920s, and radio started having an effect, and so did the phonograph. And one thing about radio was uh, like people could buy a radio and then listen to this really cool music from hundreds of miles away. They had these clear channel radio stations like WLS in Chicago, and they did one of the very first barn dance programs. And Bill Monroe and his brother Charlie, who are considered some of the originators of bluegrass, uh, actually got a gig on that radio program. They were dancers at the uh, WLS barn dance. Then they started traveling around and playing as a duo, Bill Monroe playing mandolin and Charlie playing guitar. And they started mixing the old folk tunes that they had known with more modern influences of, of blues and jazz and speeding things up. And um, then, you know, that is what was some of the original 
they didn't call it bluegrass then, they called it hillbilly music. And that was the marketing term for it. And then Bill Monroe's brother, Charlie, left. They split and did their own bands. Bill started doing his called, uh, because he was from Kentucky, called it the Bluegrass Boys. And he went through a lot of different musicians. Um, before 1945, what happened was a couple of guys named Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs. Uh, Lester on guitar and singing and Earl on banjo with his own unique banjo playing style that he pretty much invented. They joined Bill Monroe's band. And that is considered to be the first true bluegrass music by the historians and aficionados. And then it all just kind of goes from there. And uh, it just evolves like, you know, you think about rock and roll and how many different kinds of rock music there are, or jazz and how many different kinds of jazz there are. Same thing with bluegrass. It has been, you know, kind of evolving since 1945. And we've got some really interesting stuff that's not really anything like the original <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> but that's where the roots are. And uh, so with True Grass, wanted to embrace that, the original early stuff, but then also the more modern, what we might call progressive bluegrass. And it all does have roots in those ancient songs that were brought from the European settlers when they came here in the 1700s and later. Well, I can tell you that we very much thank you for drawing both the history and the music together and playing it right up into our present and delivering it to the future. So, thanks so much for, for True Grass and um, we'll go back to enjoying some more of it now. All right, really appreciate it, Michael. Pleasure to talk to you, I'm, I'm honored, thank you. You bet, we'll see you down the road. Keep that fire stoked. Will do, and you too. <laughs> see you later. All right, bye now. Hey folks, a quick announcement here. Uh, we're going to put together what we call Big Top Slightly Batty Halloween Tiny Tent Show. We will host a spooky variety show of sorts. It's going to include scary stories, tunes, readings, collaborations, and plenty of great costumes. We are also looking for photos of Halloween's past to use during the show. So find your favorite Halloween photo. It could be of you, your kids, your grandkids, with their permission, of course. Send it to marketing at bigtop.org, marketing at bigtop.org by October 26th. That email will be placed in the show notes for, for this show. You can just check that if you didn't get it. And um, we will feature your photo in our Halloween show. We'd love to have it. So remember, the slightly batty Halloween Tiny Tent Show will air at 7 p.m. on Friday, October 30th. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Tiny Tent Show. We're the True Grass Trio. Thanks so much for tuning in and live stream land. And we're going to bring out some special guests now to play these next songs with us. We've got Molly O and Randy Sabine. And Molly is going to sing a song for you all called In the Midnight Moonlight by Peter Rowan.
Thank you so much, Molly. That was beautiful. And Randy, it's just great to have you guys up here yeah, playing with us. Yeah, it's great to be here, Tom. Wow, what fun. And uh, yeah, so the, and that song by Peter Rowan, uh, he was a member of Bill Monroe's Bluegrass Boys back in, I believe, the 1960s. Then he went off on his own and started doing things. And speaking of Bill Monroe, uh, he's considered the inventor of bluegrass. And so uh, he went through a lot of different band members in the 30s and 40s. But when Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs joined his Bluegrass Boys, that's considered to be the first true bluegrass that was ever recorded, 1945 gave us this song now, take it away with toy heart <laughs> Spoken, darling, you toyed with toy heart. You played with my poor heart like a toy. The toy broke, and then we had to part. It never can be mended. A hopeless romance ended. Darling, you toyed with the toy heart. Darling, you toyed with the toy heart. I think I played the game right from the start. The toy heart was broken when parting words were spoken. Someday, time alone will heal this broken heart. The clouds will roll away, the sun will shine someday. Darling, you toyed with a toy heart. Darling, you toyed with a toy heart. I think I played the game right from the start. This toy heart was broken when parting words were spoken. Darling, you toyed with a toy heart. Flat and Earl Scruggs, they left the Bluegrass Boys and did their own band. 1948 brought us this one. There's a cabin in the pines of the hills of Caroline, and a blue-eyed girl is waiting there for me. I'm a going back someday, and from her I'll never stray.
trip back to the hills of Caroline. I want to see that blue-eyed girl. She's the sweetest in the world. And my cabin in the hills of Caroline. Oh, my cabin in the shadow of that pine. And my blue-eyed girl be down in Shining bright, and the whippoorwill is calling from the hill. I'll show her all my love with a million stars above. I love her now, and I know I always will. Oh, my cabin in the shadow of that pine, and my blue eyed girl way down in Caroline. Someday and Scruggs. Well, there was a really famous uh, all-women bluegrass group back in the 1930s. They even played for the Roosevelts in the White House and the Queen of England. They were called the Coon Creek Girls. I'm going around this world, baby mine. Baby mine, I'm 
<laughs> Malio, ladies and gentlemen. Been around the world. It feels fantastic. Yeah. And now we're gonna got a couple we got more. Time for a couple more yet? We do have, I think, Jed. We got time for a couple more. Um, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, thank you all of the sponsors for allowing this to happen, and thank you all of those folks out there who are going to hit that donate button because uh, they're enjoying this so much, and uh, we are enjoying this so much. You could we get a job on public radio, Tom. <laughs> I used to have one. <laughs> I thought that was a donut button. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, that's it. You hit it and you get a donut. The a front donut. door bell rings. Uh, that would be great. Well, anyway, thanks again for tuning in. We're going to leave you with a couple here. Uh, this one was from a bluegrass duo called Johnny and Jack uh, back in 1951, and it's called Ashes of Love. Take it away, Jeff. <laughs> that gleamed in your eyes has gone out to my surprise you said goodbye my heart bled I can't revive your love it's dead ashes of love cold as ice you made the debt I paid the price our love is gone Trusted, dear, that our love would stand. Your every wish was my command. My heart tells me that I must forget. I loved you then, I love you yet. Ashes of love, cold as ice. You made the debt, I paid the price. Thank you so much and thanks for tuning in again we're going to leave you with one that i think just has a great message and it's by bill staines singer songwriter from vermont and uh, it's called uh, well we hope to see you again we hope to see you down the road i do believe there will be waiting for me somewhere song that's worth the singing, worth singing somewhere down the road, down the road, down the road, there's 
There's a song worth singing down the road. When the way seems long and slow, remember when you go. There's a song worth singing down the road. Somewhere down the road, another friend that's worth knowing, worth knowing. Somewhere down the road, down the road, down the road, there's a friend worth knowing down the road. If the way seems long and slow, remember when you go, there's a friend worth knowing down the road. We'll see you down the road. Well, folks, that's our Tiny Tent Show for tonight. Thank you to Tom Drawn and his True Grass crew, Bruce Quayley, Judd Malishki, Molly Otis, and Randy Sabine. And thank you to our sponsors, Jim and Joy Perry, Memorial Medical Center, Rondeau's True Value, Cable, Wisconsin, Pete and Colleen McIntyre, Pete and Sarah Richter, Myra Ainer. If you can join these sponsors, we hope that you will consider it. As I said at the top of the show, all of your donations go to support not only the performers and the musicians that you see on the screen, but the folks behind the scenes working hard to pull this together. Uh, I would remind you again that there is a virtual tip jar available right now as you're watching the show. But we are just so grateful for your support. Until we can sell tickets to the real deal, as I've been saying, until we can really bring you in and wrap you under canvas again, um, We'll bring you this tiny version. We miss you, but we will see this through. I hope your neighbors are being good to you, and I hope you're being good to your neighbors. Do the best you can. Hang in there. And now the time has come. Not to uh, bid you adieu or to say goodbye, but rather, as uh, we used to say where I was from, still say, well, I suppose, forward.